Human civilization consumes a lot of resources. Something that, whether or not you actually have watched this channel, you should definitely be aware of. 102 million barrels of oil a day, 320 billion cubic feet of natural gas a day, nearly 20 million tons of coal a day, 5 million tons of fresh iron a day, a bit under 1 million tons of fresh aluminum every day. Humanity consumes a lot. And in quite a number of areas, and with quite a number of resources, we are going to be running into some supply issues, so to speak. However, there are a few resources you need not actually be concerned about. There is a brief list of a few things that we're not actually going uh, to be finding ourselves running out of anytime soon. And by anytime soon, I mean the next several centuries going forward. Now, we did a video similar to this uh, nearly a year ago. If you want to watch that one, there's a link to it up in the corner. That one only included five resources. This one will include ten, and only two of the resources from that original video will be making it into this video. So we're going to start with the same one we started with last time, coal. One of the three fossil hydrocarbons, the solid one, obviously, the most energy-dense one, and the most abundant one. The one out of the three that we will never, ever be able to deplete, at least on any reasonable timescale. You see, up to this point now, humanity has uh, burned through probably around one and a half trillion tons of coal. And in terms of reserves, which in coal terms, uh, reserves just means uh, the amount of coal in a particular deposit or particular seams that are actively being mined at the moment. So in reserves, there is another one and a half trillion tons of coal still remaining. And in terms of resources in place, all the coal and seams and deposits that is not actually being mined, there are between 20 and 22 trillion tons of coal still out there in unmined resources. So yeah, there's just, there is so much coal. Basically, to get an understanding or to understand the reasoning behind it, just uh, look up, or if you already have a rough idea, Remember that since coal is formed uh, by dead plants when they're buried deep and compressed, just look up or remember how much uh, of a disparity there is, how much of an enormous difference uh, there is between total plant biomass on the earth at any given time versus the pitiful amount of total animal biomass. So. Thus is why there is so much more coal than anything else. And how long would this coal last? Well, at our peak levels of consumption, which we are no longer at, we were consuming about 10 billion tons a year. Now, since everyone's turning away from coal and chasing after natural gas, we are only consuming about 7 billion tons a year, which obviously translates to about 700 billion tons per century which then translates to about 7 trillion tons per millennia. So, you know, between 20 and 22 trillion tons, you find 21 trillion tons. And, uh, you know, 21 trillion divided by 7 trillion, that gives you 3 millennia worth of coal. So, another thing we are not running out of anytime soon is aluminum. Few people know that by percentage, at least, aluminum is more abundant in the Earth's crust than iron. The top spot for primary metals actually belongs to aluminum. Granted, iron is in second place right behind it, of course. Aluminum of which we obviously use in its metal form. Whether pure or in alloys with other metals, we use it for automobiles and vehicles of all kinds. We use it for infrastructure. We use it for machines. In terms of total known resources, in its primary ore form, which is in a mineral called bauxite, 
in deposits across the world, total estimated resource amount is between 55 to 75 billion tons. And at present, we mine up roughly 300 million tons a year. So that translates to about 30 billion tons per century. So in those reserve amounts, that would give you at least two centuries, a little bit more. However, it still extends beyond that. You see, a lot of aluminum occurs in various concentrations in different types of natural clay across the world. Now, it doesn't occur in the clay in high enough concentrations to warrant being affordable to mine, since aluminum prices are usually only around $2,000 per ton globally. But if supplies were ever strained and the prices were much higher, then those clays would be worth harvesting uh, for the sake of extracting that aluminum, as opposed to being harvested just for their use as clay. And the total amount of aluminum in global clay is unquantified, but estimated to be several times greater than the total amount of aluminum in global bauxite ore deposits. So that would be, you know, equivalent of several more centuries worth of aluminum at our current consumption rate on top of the two centuries at least that we would already be getting out of global bauxite ore resources. And the only other resource that was in the original video, iron. Iron usually mined up in its ore forms of hematite and taconite, and used, of course, at least basically 95% of all iron is used to make steel, the metal alloy that holds up our civilization. Now, we presently mine up about 1.5 billion tons of iron a year, and total global resources of Iron deposits are estimated to be roughly 230 billion tons. So at 1.5 billion tons a year, that would be roughly 150 years or so. But similar to aluminum, there is another part to the story. One of the iron ores, hematite, tends to, apart from occurring in its own veins and deposits, it tends to also occur alongside other metal ores mixed in with them in smaller amounts. Now, since iron is usually only $100 per ton, these hematite tailings, or essentially mining waste, are usually just discarded by the mining companies because it's not worth it. But if we ever actually really needed more iron, then all these hematite tailings could simply be regathered and turned into iron, and the amount in them, similar to the aluminum amounts in clays, is estimated to be uh, significantly higher than the amount in actual iron ore deposits. So that would add additional centuries onto that potential iron supply amount. Magnesium. Most people are used to referring to it uh, in the form of its dietary supplement. However, the overwhelming majority of magnesium consumed by society is consumed in non-human dietary forms. It is actually a very important additive for many metallic alloys that allow our modern civilization to exist. And we get it via many processes. We mine it from magnesium-containing minerals. We extract it from underground magnesium salt brines. And magnesium is also contained in the waste tailings from the mining operations of several other types of metals and minerals. At present, uh, we consume about 30 million tons of new magnesium every year, and magnesium resources in mineable magnesium minerals around the world are estimated to be about 19 billion tons. So at 30 million tons a year, that would be 3 billion tons per century. So that alone in the mineable magnesium minerals would be over six centuries. There's also roughly the same amount or potentially more contained in underground magnesium salt brines, so that would be at least another six centuries worth of magnesium. And the amount of magnesium contained in mining waste tailings from the mining of other resources is unknown. So that adds who knows how much potentially to that magnesium supply. Now, coming in at number five, in no particular order, mind you, sulfur. 
What do we need sulfur for? Well, we mostly use it uh, to make sulfuric acid. What on earth do we need sulfuric acid for? Well, we need it for everything. Like, no, for real. We use sulfuric acid in the, uh, the synthesis process to uh, create, like, everything. Not really everything, but, like, a huge portion of all the various uh, types of things that we make everything out of around us. And we also use it in uh, the manufacturing of plant fertilizer, which allows us to grow so many crops so quickly and thus allows us to uh, feed our population of nearly 8 billion. At present, we consume roughly 80 million tons of sulfur per year. Now, most of that sulfur isn't even mined. Most of it is contained within and thus extracted from petroleum or natural gas during their refining process. And... In the remaining reserves of petroleum and natural gas across the world, there is an estimated 5 billion tons of sulfur contained within them. So that alone would be at least another half century worth of sulfur. And the amount of sulfur contained in coal, in shales, and in other sulfur-bearing organic mineral deposits that we aren't really uh, actually extracting for the purpose of sulfur is estimated to be potentially containing 600 billion tons of sulfur. Which, at 80 million tons a year, you know, 8 billion tons per century, uh, 80 billion tons per millennia, that would be a bit short of, um, you know, what's, what's that? 8,000 years worth of sulfur. So our sulfur supply, it's... Uh, it's, it's like coal. There's, there's plenty of sulfur out there. Soda ash, or sodium carbonate. Soda ash, we consume about 15 million tons a year, and we use it for a lot of things. We use it to synthesize uh, and make so much stuff, and we also need it for the refining process for aluminum to actually get aluminum out of bauxite ore. There are an estimated... 25 to 47 billion tons of soda ash in known underground deposits across the world. So at 15 million tons a year, that gives you 1.5 billion tons per century, 15 billion tons per millennia. So that gives you going a little bit above the 25 mark, we'll go up to 30. That gives you at least two millennia of soda ash and something with a similar name, potash, which we desperately need because that's uh, one of our primary uh, things with which we use to fertilize plants, which allows us again to grow so many so quickly and so efficiently. We currently mine up and consume about 42 million tons of potash every year, and potash resources and reserves are divided. There's two different amounts. There are 5.8 billion tons of potash reserves in near-surface deposits, in places like Midwestern Canada. So that alone gives us over a century of remaining potash. However, in many yet to be accessed deep underground deposits in places like Pakistan and New Mexico and Arizona, there are nearly 250 billion tons of unaccessed potash. So that would translate to somewhere over five to six thousand years worth. And now a metal people might not expect to be on this list, titanium. There is actually a lot more titanium than people think. It's actually on the most abundant metals in the Earth's crust list. Titanium, to most people's surprise, uh, most of it isn't even consumed in its metal form. Most of it's consumed for titanium-based paints. However, we also use it uh, for really high-strength metal alloys, for things like aircraft engine parts, and submarine hulls, and for titanium cables for really big bridges. We mine up and consume about 11.5 million tons of titanium every year, and in known titanium reserves, there are about 1.9 billion tons remaining yet to be mined, so that alone is a bit under two centuries worth. And in known titanium resources, not yet classified as reserves, there are another 2 billion tons of titanium on top of that, which would be roughly another two centuries worth of titanium. So somewhere between 350 and 400 years worth. And another metal 
people might not expect to be on the list, lead. There is a lot of lead remaining out there on Earth. Although, again, there is always a difference between total remaining amount of resource and how quickly you can extract it, lead production from mines worldwide has already peaked. Granted, it may go up again, but lead production peaked uh, back in, I believe it was 2013, 2012 maybe, and it has fallen quite a way since then. But yes, there is a lot of lead out there, surprisingly. We currently mine up and consume roughly 4.5 million tons a year, most of which is used for lead asset batteries, for vehicles, and in presently, and in reserves at presently active mines, there is a remaining 83 million tons of lead, which would only translate to about 20 years. However, in total resources out there, and the lead contained alongside other metals in their deposits, such as zinc and copper, there is roughly another 2 billion tons of lead. 500 years worth. And the final item on this list, fluor spar, our primary source of getting fluoride or fluorine. So here is from whence comes your toothpaste. Granted, only a small part of total fluoride or fluorine consumption is used in the making of toothpaste. Most of it's actually used as a flux material in the smelting of many metals and is actually critical for its use in the refining process of aluminum. Now, at present, we mine up about 6 million tons of fluor spar every year, and in remaining fluor spar deposits in active mining areas and actively mining countries, there are another 310 million tons yet to be mined, so that should translate to over 50 years. However, there's also a large uh, unaccessed resource amount in fluor spar reserves in other countries, and much fluor spar and fluoride bearing minerals occurring inside and alongside other resources that are mined up, however, usually being in small amounts such that they're discarded with the mining tailings. That total amount is estimated to be somewhere around 5 billion tons, which would translate to over 600 years worth of fluor spar and fluoride access. So you have no need to worry about your supply of toothpaste for now. All right, that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Also, if you enjoy this kind of content, then obviously subscribe and hit the bell or else YouTube won't tell you about anything. Here's some other videos I've done. If you want to help me out, support my work, donate money, my paypal.me is in the uh, description underneath the video. God bless each and every one of you. I will see you all around next time.